Well, as vaccinations slowly start to roll out around the world, we turn to infectious disease specialist Dr. Zane Chagala this morning to again answer questions about the latest developments with COVID-19. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, no problem. Good to see you. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, the Premier's announcement coming down later today. The Premier is saying everything is on the table. If you had been at the table, what's your recommendations? Lockdown? Numbers in Hamilton yeah, are up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's hard to avoid that scenario. And, and obviously there are other factors at play here, including people that need to go to work for the sake of functioning in society. But at the end of the day, you know, hospitals are full of overcapacity. You know, healthcare is stretched to the brink. There's outbreaks in many sectors. If you look at our, you know, provincial risk framework, we're essentially checking every box there in Hamilton, and it had been for the last two weeks. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's much left to do in this city, and it's it's unfortunate for the people that have been trying hard to keep things safe. But you know, the disease is prevalent; it's circulating, and uh, and people are getting it from the community in Hamilton, which really does mean that things are not under control. No, not at all. And the uh, vaccine rollout can't happen fast enough. Now, the Moderna uh, vaccine is uh, about to get uh, U.S. approval, uh, followed by Canada. Who knows the timeline, but I'm sure pretty soon. Uh, big game mm -hmm. changer with this uh, Moderna vaccine coming into play? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think many of us have thought this is the vaccine that will change things. The Pfizer vaccine certainly is the first one to the market, and, and they've done a really good job of getting out there. But this is the vaccine that, you know, essentially is stored similar to other vaccines um, that can be transported much more easily, that can go into more remote communities, but also be put into long-term care facilities to do mass vaccination campaigns there. So uh, hopefully this is approved soon. The data looks very good and, and in the same ballpark as uh, as Pfizer. And so, you know, I think there's uh, there's certainly a need to get this uh, approved if, if it is such. And then again, Canada has a deal to, to get this out there soon. And, and this is the bigger purchase for Canada, too. So yeah. this is probably the vaccine many of us will get. Now, the efficacy, as you say, is about the same. What are the differences uh, with the composition of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? Yeah, similar components. You know, the, the two the two things that differ with the, these vaccines, they're both mRNA-based. It's really how you patent that, that lipid particle that holds all the mRNA together. And Pfizer has, and BioNTech have developed the one particle, and Moderna has developed the other. The differences between the two account for the refrigeration differences, whereas uh, Moderna has developed a particle that's a bit more cold-sensitive or insensitive. They can handle some of the variations, whereas... The Pfizer one is very, very tough to, to deal with other than a very short period out of the fridge. So, you know, that's the major difference. There are some components that cross react. And so people that have allergic reactions to one may have allergic reactions to the other, but there are some that don't. Um, so, you know, they're, they're pretty similar, although subtle differences. And again, the refrigeration component being the biggest one. Right, and that certainly helps with logistics. Uh, what about pregnant women? What do we know? Yeah. we. They were excluded from all the studies. You know, there were women that got pregnant in both the Moderna and Pfizer trials. You know, everything seems to be going okay in the pregnancy. Many of these women haven't delivered yet, so we don't know 100%. You know, people have been on different sides. The UK has said, you know, probably not immunizing pregnant women until we get more data. The US has actually been pretty uh, uh, on the opposite side and saying, listen, pregnant women have higher rates of complications, particularly ICU stays. You know, there might be a potential small risk here, but at the same time, there is a huge benefit here. And, you know, you have to weigh that against the chance of you getting COVID and, and again, what that can do to your pregnancy, too. So yeah. I, I think it's kind of risk benefit decision. There's nothing in here that seems like it's going to be unsafe for pregnancy, but it just okay. hasn't been trialed in pregnancy. Yeah. Speaking of the UK, there's also a new variant of COVID-19 mm. found. Um, is that how concerning is that? You know, th these things show up. So they're, they're, you know, this one is based on some of the transmission into mink farms. And again, you know, there is some subtle changes to that spike protein. It isn't one that shouldn't be uh, uh, reduced the efficacy to a vaccine, particularly as we haven't really vaccinated many people yet. And that's usually the stress that causes changes. It's something to monitor. It's a good kind of fingerprint of what's going on in that community. But at the end of the day, there isn't really a clear indication whether or not the virus has actually changed or this is just a, a little bit of a change of the appearance. Okay, sadly we've run out of time, but I suppose we should end with a PSA. Don't buy vaccines on the internet. No, no, please, please. <laughs>
This yeah. is health. Get it regulated. Please get real vaccines. Sad that that's actually provider. out there. Yeah. 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 Hey, Dr. Zane Chagla, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. No worries. Take care, Bob.